There is our ride. We are down here in Fort something or other, Myers, I don't know. We're doing an iguana hunt, invasive iguanas. There is so many of them here. And there's one plan to possibly offer a bounty on them. Dead or alive, but if we pay per iguana, people are gonna go out and hunt them for money. There is only one way to get rid of them, and it is not trapping. I gotta rig up the slingshot. We'll go meet our guide, and then he's gonna take us up the canals. We'll see if we can't get on that iguana. Catch and cook invasive species iguana with a slingshot. This is gonna be fun. Off on a new oceanic adventure here in Florida. Fish on, this is what we came here for. Looking good. Woo! Big old barracuda, like that big. It was huge. Oh, that one. That's a big one. Clean shot right behind the ear. Beautiful. I'm Zachary Fowler, and that's my lovely wife, Sarah, and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. Hello, I'm Zach. Nice hey, to meet Zach. you. You want to introduce yourself? Captain Bud Randall, Iguana Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put a link for the guide service in the description below, so if you guys want to come down here. They are an air rifle guided company. They're making a special exception only for me, so don't waste their time calling and asking about a slingshot or spearing or blow gunning or any of that. All right. Let's see. I cut a bunch of bands before I came down and uh, we made some lead ammo. I did have some brand new slingshots that Simple Shot just released. So I was hoping to use one of those, but sighting in a new slingshot does take a little bit. Should at least have a day of practice. Since I didn't have that day of practice, we're just going to go with the old tried and true faithful Sparrow slingshot that I designed a few years back and you can get your hands on one at FowlersMakeryMischief.com where we put the adventure back in your life with every purchase. Slingshots, survival gear, or one of our signature spice blends. If you have a taste for adventure, check out FowlersMakeryMischief.com linked in the description below. We'll take the Sparrow, rig her up, and get out on the water. Tighten up my belt. This was uh, a little on the loose side from when I was uh, a bigger gentleman. Now I can't, uh, now it's too loose. Oh, there's one. I can't shoot him, he's up over the bank. I can lift you off if you get on the bank and shoot him. Oh, really? Yeah. All right, let's get an angle on him. Nugget. That didn't take long. No! <laughs> that was a per- Whoa! Did you see that? Yeah. What was it? Well, I was walking down to collect the one I just shot. I startled one, a real big one, and he actually gets up and runs across the top of the water. All right, fully dispatched. One fairly large iguana. That's a clean shot right behind the, uh, above the ear, behind the eye. Took him straight out. He went down the bank and uh, didn't have to really do anything. Bag him, tag him, and move along. Now they are, like I said at the beginning, this is an invasive species. So we are doing pest control by taking care of invasive species. Yeah, they can hold their breath for about 30 minutes if they want to. They can hold their breath for 30 minutes. That is insane. That's a long time. I wish I could hold my breath for 30 minutes. That would have made the lobsters yesterday going after them so much easier, huh, hon? Yeah. So what makes them an invasive species that ticks everybody off so badly? Building holes in the ground. They got one hole going in and there might be 15 fingers going out. They're a community animal. Yeah. And they live in a kind of like a commune. Yeah. And they all dig their own separate tunnel. So... And before you know it, the yard caves in. 
Right. Or if they're on a bridge, the bridge caves in or it sinks. Too many iguanas is not a good thing. Too many of anything is not a good thing. Too many ice creams. Too many sweeties every day made me too much of a, a good thing for a long time. Should I be looking for them down here too? Like they're more... You never know where you're going to see them. Yeah, they could, because that... Yeah, that last, oh yeah, right? There he is. Got him. All right, well that's two. Two for the sparrow slingshot. So everybody goes out and they hunt all this stuff and uh, they go and want the big game and the big adventures and they want to do this the grand slam like with their bow. And Known as the holy grail of bow hunting, the super slam is the successful harvesting of all 29 species of North American big game. I, I want like the mini slam. So I, I go all the places that I can legally with a slingshot and get one of each squirrel, pigeon, uh, oh, rattlesnake, possum, but everything I've taken, I've eaten, and we love to do it. We like to cook fun, fun and uh, delicious recipes, and we're gonna do that with these guys. I think we're actually gonna take it back home with us because this is our last day here, and uh, put it in the ice box, bring it home, and then we'll be able to cook something delicious for the kids and see if they can guess what it is. A three-foot iguana will lay in the vicinity of 48 eggs four times a year makes that one iguana worth about 200 at the end of the year. So right now we're on the hunt for a bigger, big, big one. Hello, Doc. Don't worry, you're not on the menu. This is so pretty. It's like a completely different world. Like houses on the water like this and the boat and just be able to cruise around here. Every time you uh, start hunting for something new, especially if it's a camouflaged animal like this, you know, where they uh, they hide so well at times, and other times they're just in plain sight, you gotta train your eyes to start spotting it. There's a nice one right there in the tree. It's not the cleanest shot. We'll leave him be, he's kinda small. We're looking for a big guy. That's three. Three for the slingshot. Oh, that one. That's a big one. Oh, and it's looking at the other one. Oh, yeah? yeah. Full of eggs so we get to eat some eggs, huh? That is five for the Sparrow win. This is turning out so much better. I thought maybe we'd, all of this work, we'd be at it for a long time and we'd get maybe one of them or something like that, not uh, as many as five. So that means that there's one for each of us and I can get all the meat and we can feed the kids. Perfect. Look at there's a couple, of, oh, there's a lot of them on this guy's yard. Look at them all. Two there, a good size one right there. Look at that little pontoon boat. It's a one, two, three, maybe four. Maybe four people, a little four person party on that thing. You'd be pushing it to put more on. That's the smallest one I've ever seen. So this, all these canals, it's just like a giant lake. Yeah, all these canals are connected together and the water comes out of the Everglades and uh, migrates into the ocean by a spillway about a half a mile from the beach. So is it, uh, is it salted water or is it? This is all pure fresh water. Pure fresh water, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, they are spraying. Oh, there. look at that one by the, uh, he's hiding over there by Mary.
Now that's the biggest one. Big chunk of meat. That's a nice size one too. Right yeah. behind the ear. Seven. This thing's getting heavy. That'll be a bit of work to process all that up, but that'll be some great iguana legs. Let's see. We can do them up like uh, chicken wings and all kinds of fun stuff. Ooh. It's gonna be good. are back. That's it. That's it. That's all he does. All right, seven iguanas. All with the slingshot. Very cool. This has been an awesome hunt. How do you recommend we cook these? I don't know. I've had them several different ways and they're good about any way you cook them. But I've had iguana fried rice, iguana tacos. I've had them grilled. There's pineapple shrimp, lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper shrimp. And I've had them deep fried. Pan fried, deep fried, stir fried. Any bad ways? One, somebody made a pot roast out of one and it was not very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't even sound good, pot roast iguanas. <laughs> yeah. All right, special thanks to huntingiguanas.com and Bud for taking us out. Thank you so much, that was awesome. It was so cool out there. It was like, it's such a beautiful, special place. I, I'm a little bit jealous. I wish, we, I'm gonna go home and dig some channels so I can have some to motor around in. Or I'll just have to come down and visit more often. There you go. All right, thank you, sir. Successful hunt, now we just gotta head out, clean them, and then head the rest of the way back home so we can have the whole family try it out, see what they think. The Uana Hunt was our last adventure stop before we headed back to Maine. We did stop at Sarah's brother on the way up through Florida, and I cleaned the iguanas in his backyard. If you want to see the iguana cleaning process, check out the link in the description below. And when we got home, we were in for quite the surprise. We should have stayed in Florida. <laughs> ah, just kidding. I love it. I love the snow. I love winter. Keep your hot, sunny, miserable, sweaty weather floor. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeehaw! Life in Maine. You good old springtime nor'easter. Love it. did this up the first time. This one I didn't process the meat off the tail and I got the full legs and I tried to get the back straps and all that out. It didn't really give me that much more to go like really crazy about it. I didn't keep any of the full rib cage and body parts. Um, if we're doing a survival thing obviously I would do the old stew, the ever stew and I'd stew the entire thing and get all the nutrients out of it and drink it and put wadobo in and drink it and pick every piece of meat and stuff I could off of it. But when it comes to the iguanas, it seems like they got, you know, a front leg, a rear leg, they have a big piece of meat on the tail. Um, the bigger they are, the piece of meat goes to a certain distance and then it gets very fibery and it, it feels like it's just not worth wrestling with it. There's no real tenderloin or anything like that. This is one of the bigger tail meat pieces. Like that's as much as you got off of one side of the tail. And I even saved the hides and salted some of the hides down. I have four of those salted, so I'm gonna try and make, uh, I don't know, something cool out of it. Wouldn't it be cool to have like a Crocodile Dundee leather vest with, a, with like the 
tanned hide of the, uh, the iguana on the back, or maybe I'll make a slingshot pouch out of the iguana hide to keep my ammo in. Maybe four pounds, almost about five, four or five pounds of meat off the whole seven iguanas. Let's uh, make up a brine. Got my jalapenos out there smoking on the grill. And uh, tomorrow I will make a chipotle lime sauce to dip our really awesome fried iguana wings in. So first, to make a brine, I'm going to go with about a cup of salt. I can lose the gloves now, I guess. I've never cooked an iguana before, so I'm hoping this turns out really good. When I was processing them up, there was a slight uh, creaturey smell that was very different to me that kind of reminded me of the muskiness of a, a snake or something like that. Uh, but once the hides were off and they were all cleaned up, it's just, just like any other piece of meat. One cup of sugar. Not sugar, salt. Calls for red pepper flakes, but these are my kimchi herbs. It's a red pepper, but it's not super hot and very flavorful. I like that. I'm gonna put one, two tablespoons of that. It says two tablespoons of black pepper. That seems like an awful lot to me. I just looked up somebody else's recipe online. I'm just going to go with one. Two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I'll take her over to the stove. I don't usually measure all that much, but people are always like, what are you doing? And, and I am curious of this brine, how accurate, you know, and a brine gone bad can ruin everything. I'm just gonna pour half of my six cups of water in. Greg and I did that once where uh, he brined our fish and he over brined it. It was so salty you couldn't even eat it. Oh no, it's all salty. Wow. So we'll just warm up half of this water. Once everything's dissolved, we'll add some of the rest of the water and some ice cubes to bring down the temperature because I don't want to cook the meat by putting it into my brine and have the brine too hot. I just want to soak it in that overnight, let it absorb some of those flavors. There we go, while well, the sugars and uh, salt are dissolving and breaking down in that, I'm gonna take half of this and put this away and freeze it up. I'm gonna vacuum bag it too so that it uh, lasts longer in the freezer and does a better job of it. There we go. Now I can set some of that aside and when I have some company that's unsuspecting of what I might be cooking, we'll bust that out and share it with them and then tell them what they ate. wings in the bag. All right, let's add it. We're going for it. Sarah just cleaned to him. I'm getting so much trouble. There we go. There's our, that's gonna work. I have a good feeling about this. Personally, I think that looks tasty. I'm gonna pop her in the fridge and tomorrow, or for you, two seconds from now, we'll start cooking these. seeds out of the uh, these guys here and we're taking the skin off of this guy here oh look at all the juices coming out of her I'm gonna save that pepper juice maybe there's something to be done with that I feel like that's a waste I can smell this so delicious Making a lifetime supply of this, apparently. <laughs> All right, we got our peppers. Let's toss those in. Another red pepper. All right, we're gonna go. 
go with a teaspoon of cumin, just like everything else they've done. I, I looked at a recipe at some point, and now I'm just doing it based on my feel for what should be in there. So one teaspoon of cumin. We had just added a whole container, like, a, I don't know what's in those, like a cup and a half of sour cream, and then um, about a cup of mayonnaise, or just a little bit less, three quarters of a cup. And then we got some of this nice smoked paprika. This was just a little fancy one that I bought at uh, TJ Maxx. Keeping a tablespoon of chili, ground chili powder, a tablespoon of black pepper. I keep thinking to myself, if I write a cookbook, that like, I'm gonna have to cook everything all over again. Because in the videos, I never, I never measure stuff. I'm just like, some of this, some of that. That looks good. Oh wow, that is good. <laughs> It's a hard squeeze. There we go. Nice and fine. Wow. There's so much lime flavor to that, but like not overpowering and the spice and the heat. All right, time to make our dry rub. A cup of flour and a cup of corn. Two. Probably about a tablespoon of garlic powder about a tablespoon of onion powder, a good bit of black pepper, about a tablespoon of salt, and our whisk. Just gonna dry them off. Wanna make sure that they, uh, the egg wash sticks to them as much as possible. I don't want to double batter them. And I feel like that always makes, I can taste it when people do that. It's just too, too battered. Now that I've dried them off, I get it in here, move it around the egg wash. Now we'll get it into the batter. All right, oh, really well worked. So I'm just gonna work it onto Work it into there so it gets absorbed. I don't want that coming off in my fryer. So it doesn't look like it's a really heavy load of that stuff on there. And then we'll let it sit for 10 minutes while we chop up our vegetables that'll be in that stir fry the wings with it after. I keep calling them wings. Maybe that's just because I know for myself it's gonna make it more palatable when I bite into it. <laughs> Last pieces here. You might notice that I am not joined by my lovely wife at this point in the game. <laughs> she ran away. I think she's chickening out. I told her I'd save her some and she said, don't bother. Uh, she said, after watching me dispatch them so quickly and so vigorously with the slingshot, she says she doesn't have an appetite for it. One last piece here. We'll let that rest and adhere to our flour mix and cut up some vegetables for it right after and we toss these in the wok. Get here, and we'll have to do this one right here so big 
we're going to temp it. So we're looking at 165. That's when chicken's done, so I'm guessing the same thing when a guan is done. That'll be good enough. Since we're going for a single fry, we're doing it at three, 350 until done. I'll do these two big ones first and see if it, uh, how we do. We'll see how long. Hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. One fifty two. One fifty two on the small ones, five minutes of cook time. One seventy four for the small ones. Those are coming out. Right. Whew. These things are huge. That was off the biggest one. Let's see if we can get a leg up on the uh, competition and cook these guys right. And here's the last of it, all the tail bits. Throw those in there. Very small, some of these. Really, now come here, check this out. I think I nailed it. Letting it set and everything, no junk in here. No garbage, it's perfectly clean. Nice, clean, I can recycle that and use it again. Got my good walk. This is that new one that was sent to me by Smithy Ironworks. You can see those hand forge marks there. It's just so awesome. Visualize that. Look at how clean that is. That worked out so well. Oh, maybe a little. There we go. Just want to like saute all this stuff up and then throw these guys in there and just let them absorb some of those flavors from the oil and the pepper and the garlic on the outside. That fresh stuff tossed with so when you take it out and you have a bite of it there's a little bit of that stuck to it and a little bit of that flavor stuck to it not just the fried battered uh, meat <laughs> getting done getting done oh yeah oh look at that just a little crisping up and the peppers and the onions all through there just dump them right into the thing Ooh. Dust them with that. Nothing like a little green onions. Just put him right on top like that. Beautiful work of art. Oh, he's still moving. All right, all right. All right, so let's say grace. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the iguana and the catch and the adventure. Bless this food to our body in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll have the guys down in a minute and have everybody give it a try. Everybody that has enough nerve to try. I think Aiden left, so he's going to miss out. But uh, I'm going to put a little bit of this into here. And uh, nobody has to be grossed out later. I can save as much of this as possible. because This is so tasty. I can't even begin to tell you, if, if the iguana stinks completely, that like this right here has made this whole everything worth it. I, I, I've wanted to do this for a while and make some of this, but this just, the flavor is mind blowing. Mm. I think I want to try to go with a boneless piece, a little nice little tail nugget right there, nicely cleaned up. Wish me luck. I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't quite taste like frog and, or chicken or, I, mean, I guess it's more like chicken than frog to me. I don't know. It's almost unimpressive how normal it is. It's not anything all weird. I'm gonna try one of these other pieces of the tail. It's pretty good. How about, a wing or a leg. Oh, this guy right here. Take some of that outer shell out there a little bit. Just see what it tastes like. Yeah. Easy to eat. 
easy to deal with. Like, better than spring turkey. It does have a little, it's a little bit rich on the salty side and I'm not sure. I don't think that's so much the crust. No. I think my brine might have been a little bit on the strong side. It would have been better. Um, so that brine recipe, like I brine mix I did before, I'd say do half of that when it comes to the salt. It does come off as a slightly saltier. But once you're dipping it in here, you don't notice that. And this stuff turned out so good. I'm so happy with this. This was a success, as far as I'm concerned. I could, if I lived there in Florida, I'd pop these every other day and make the family iguana. I tell you, possum, woodchuck, they're okay, but like, they have a slightly off flavor that you, you're like, ugh, you know, not this. From beginning to end, I spent an hour and got seven iguanas. Took me about 30 minutes to gut them all, not even that. Came home, skinned them, that took me about two and a half hours, but I did like the first two over an hour and then the rest of them in like seconds and I was listening to my audiobook and talking to people at the same time. So that took longer. I would say a three day process and two to two and a half hours for four iguanas to cook a meal for somebody and you have a delicious meal that would blow people's minds as how normal that is. And the Tobaldi lime sauce is epic. Let's go upstairs and get whoever else is up there still. I think Grant and Matt and C and John can try it, see if, uh, if everybody's willing to try it. All right, come on in. Have a seat. Okay. My concern is, is like, if it's really good, why doesn't yeah. everybody eat iguana? Why can't I get iguana and fruit? I, I yeah, think, exactly. I think uh, they don't here because, just because of the look of it. Mm. You know, chicken, even, uh, chicken, wild chickens all on there. Nobody's eating them. Like they're running around parking lots and there's homeless people and they're begging for food, but yet there's wild chickens in the parking lots. And and there's eggs in the bushes. Like Sarah wanted to make scrambled eggs out of the bushes. <laughs> like she was gonna go in there and like, or like, I don't know. Sarah's so, hardcore. Yeah, that's... she's ready to dive into the bushes. And so I, I think people are just afraid of it. We got, those are the, the tail, there's a leg. Here, let's try the most simple thing for you to see you get over your fear. I can see Matt sweating already. He's like, <laughs> tail, tail? Uh -huh. Those are probably from the same tail. <laughs> probably. Think it and sink it. Tail. Yeah. No bone? No bone. It is a little bit, I guess maybe you would say the tiniest bit tougher than a piece of chicken. But like, Weird. Yeah. Weird how normal? Yeah. Like how it's just like... It's so hard to picture this. April Fool's is just chicken. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're I know. That would more no, sense. No, it's yeah. iguana. Is this a uh, tail? That's a tail nugget, yep. Oh yeah, this is giving me octopus vibes for sure. Mm, yeah. Octopus. Does it break it's, apart like... Uh, it's more It's more like rubbery like lobster or alligator. Mm. You know? Yeah, I don't eat as much alligator as you. Well, I've only eaten it once, but it was like, I we, loved it. We have only had it in jerky form. Maybe kind of like a conch or like a harder scallop, too. Yeah. yeah something. Super. I think Butter wants a piece. She's like all excited over there. Let's Buster, sit. He's always very picky, so it wasn't the iguana. He's just like, <laughs> I must sniff it fully and Acquire its essence before I chew it. Now I will have another piece. Thank you, sir. Sit. High five. Oh. Up high. Ooh. Have some iguana. Ooh. Have some <laughs> I thought maybe it was, I assumed you wouldn't give her a chicken. Uh, okay, let me see. I will help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, 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 I'll work on it. Mm -hmm. I'll keep chewing till I get it. Ready? Stay. Stay. Here you go. So that pretty much does it for us. Uh, if I can get Sarah to eat some, then I will add one more clip at the end. Otherwise, I will say thank you guys for watching. That's been a fun adventure, and we'll see you in the next one. Fowler and team out.
Don't forget to check us out on FowlersMakeCreamInitiative.com. You get your spices, do some grilling, do some slinging, and have a great summer, guys. Yeah. It reminds me of like guinea pig. What? It reminds you of guinea pig? Yeah. It's like how many guinea pigs tougher. have you eaten? <laughs> when you make these sauces that are so good, and you're like, oh, how does this weird animal taste? Mm. Yeah, if you cut the iguana's tail off, does it regrow it? Like oh, maybe you could have an endless source of uh, yeah of food. You're just one snap iguana. It. It's you like just, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got like fit twenty of them. Every month. That's like some just... matrix thing where you just like you have like a bunch of big ones <laughs> in the backyard. Yeah. You cut their tails off. You let it grow back, and then you eat it again on him. Yeah. Could be the perfect plan. Uh, are they prone to diseases? Maybe is that what? Iguanas? Yeah. We didn't look into that. 